Hi guys, George here. Now, I know this is a day early, but I'm going to post two this weekend because I didn't think the subject of this video was appropriate to start talking about Big Brother immediately after it. So I'll make a video about my views on the week's Big Brother over the weekend and I'll make this now. And this, in this I'm going to talk a bit about why it says in the title Prisoners and Captives, in particular Troy Davis, which people might know is this person who was executed this week for supposedly um, killing a police officer in Georgia about 20 years ago. Um, now for those of you who don't know, I'll just explain a bit about the case. Basically, I think there were 11 witnesses, but the vast majority of them either pulled out or uh, or their story didn't really add up. But the state, after 20 years, the state executed this person anyway. And to be honest, I think that Troy Davis was pretty much a victim of something which is called the system. Which is basically once some senior organisation has made up their mind about something, the system won't change. So I don't think if it was down to any one person that he would have been executed, really. I think, as I said, he was a victim of the system. Although when I was talking to some of my friends about it, um, someone actually made a really good point to me, which was a lot of people are killed unfairly and they don't get the same publicity that he did. So yesterday I decided to hold a day of silence for everyone who's been killed unfairly uh, in the whole of history. Like a minute of silence for certain events, except I thought a minute wasn't really enough to commemorate that number of people, so I held a full day of silence, not including when I'm in my home, just when I was out of the house. Um, and I, well, I don't really agree with the death penalty anyway. In fact, no, that's the wrong way to put it. I fundamentally don't agree with the death penalty because I think I'm a firm believer in moral high ground and I think that the death penalty is basically using the tactics of a villainous person against them in the same way that they would. So I don't really agree with the death penalty for anyone, even Bin Laden, which I think I've actually explained on this blog before. Um, so I hope that this event changes things, really, because the system can be changed. Um, I think that's all I can really say about it. I'm going to leave you with an excerpt from The Railway Children, which is one of the best books ever. And if you haven't read it, shame on you. I'm going to leave you with an excerpt here. I've got it written here, so I'm going to have to look away from the camera for a minute so I can read it. But this is the excerpt, an excerpt I'm going to read you from the Railway Children. Later on, when the Russian stranger had been made comfortable for the night, Mother came into the girls' room. She was to sleep there in Phyllis's bed, and Phyllis was to have a mattress on the floor, a most amusing adventure for Phyllis. Directly, Mother came in, two white figures started up, and two eager voices called... Now, mother, tell us all about the Russian gentleman. A white shape hopped into the room. It was Peter, dragging his quilt behind him like the tail of a white peacock. We have been patient, he said, and I had to bite my tongue not to go to sleep. And I just nearly went to sleep, and I bit it too hard, and it hurts ever so. Do tell us. Make a nice long story of it. I can't make a long story of it tonight, said mother. I'm very tired. Bobby knew by her voice that mother had been crying, but the others didn't know. Well, make it as long as you can, said Phil, and Bobby got her arms around Mother's waist and snuggled close to her. Well, it's a story long enough to make a whole book of. He's a writer. He's written beautiful books. In Russia, at the time of the Tsar, one dared not say anything about the rich people doing wrong or about the things that ought to be done to make poor people better and happier. If one did, one was sent to prison. But they can't, said Peter. People only go to prison when they've done wrong. Or when the judges think they've done wrong, said Mother. Yes, that's so in England, but in Russia it was different, and he wrote a beautiful book about poor people and how to help them. I've read it. There's nothing in it but goodness and kindness, and they sent him to prison for it. He was three years in a horrible dungeon with hardly any light, and all damp and dreadful. 
in prison all alone for three years. Mother's voice trembled a little and stopped suddenly. But mother, said Peter, that can't be true now. It sounds like something out of a history book, the Inquisition or something. It was true, said mother. It's all horribly true. Well, then they took him out and sent him to Siberia, a convict chained to other convicts, wicked men who'd done all sorts of crimes, a long chain of them, and they walked and walked and walked for days and weeks till he thought they'd never stop walking, and overseers went behind them with whips, yes, whips, to beat them if they got tired, and some of them went lame and fell down, and when they couldn't get up and go on, they beat them and then left them to die. Oh, it's all too terrible. And at last he got to the mines, and he was condemned to stay there for life, for life, just for writing a good, noble, splendid book. How did he get away? When the war came, some of the Russian prisoners were allowed to volunteer as soldiers, and he volunteered, but he deserted at the first chance he got, and... But that's very cowardly, isn't it? said Peter, to desert, especially when it's war. Do you think he owed anything to a country that had done that to him? If he did, he owed more to his wife and children. He didn't know what had become of them. Oh, cried Bobby. He had them to think about and be miserable about too then, all the time he was in prison. Yes, he had them to think about and be miserable about, miserable about all the time he was in prison. For anything, he knew they for anything he knew, they might have been sent to prison too. They did those things in Russia. But while he was in the mines, some friends managed to get a message to him that his wife and children had escaped and come to England. So when he deserted, he came here to look for them. Had he got their address, said practical Peter. No, just England. He was going to London and he thought he had to change to our station and then he found he'd lost his ticket in his purse. Oh, do you think he'll find them? I mean, his wife and children, not the ticket and things. I hope so. Oh, I hope and pray that he'll find his wife and children again. Even Phyllis now perceived that Mother's voice was very unsteady. Why, Mother, she said, how sorry you seem to be for him. Mother didn't answer for a minute. Then she just said, yes, and seemed to be thinking. And then she seemed to be thinking. The children were quiet. Presently, she said, Dears, when you say your prayers, I think you might ask God to show his pity upon all prisoners and captives. To show his pity, Bobby repeated slowly, upon all prisoners and captives. Is that right, Mother? Yes, said Mother. Upon all prisoners and captives. All prisoners and captives.